Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TroutandFeather.com and thanks for viewing this YouTube fly tying tutorial. When it comes to purchasing materials, the entire process can be completely overwhelming. I know that from experience. When I first started buying fly tying materials over 25 years ago, I had no idea what I was looking for. I would walk into a fly shop and basically grab any materials that seemed like they were innovative or they were must-haves or they were new for that season. I would scour that clearance bin and at the end of that shopping experience, I would bring this pile of materials and dump it on the fly shop counter and pay for everything. I have no idea why some of those fly shop owners didn't stop me and say, Tim, these materials are probably not the ones that you exactly need. Let me kind of show you what's going on. I must have had this false sense of confidence or something because my eclectic collection of materials today really speaks for my lack of knowledge 25 years ago. Well, I don't want you to fall into that same boat that, that I fell into at that time. The purpose of this video is to go over a collection of materials that I believe are required if you're going to be tying dry flies. By dry flies, I'm talking about Catskill, Parachute Style, and some emergers as well, Comparaduns, and Caddis flies. So with this required or we'll say recommended collection of materials, you will be able to tie the majority of patterns out there. I can promise you that these are materials that are coming straight from my collection. These are the ones that I use on a regular basis. I'm going to kind of break it into two tiers. I'm going to have one tier that I'm going to say these are ones that I absolutely recommend. And I'm going to have a second tier that I'm going to say are going to be those optional ones. Now I have both and I have many tiers beyond that. But what I want to stress is that you don't have to get in over your head and just go out there and spend a ton of money. That's not needed by any means. If you stick with this required tier, that will give you an absolutely perfect assortment of materials to begin tying dry flies with. Now please remember, this is just all in my opinion. If there are any other materials that you think should be added to this list, by all means, please say so in the comments section below. Also, I'm going to be holding up these materials and talking about them one or two at a time. Uh, don't feel like you have to write down every single thing I say. If you look in the description of this video, I'll also put a comprehensive list of everything that I'm talking about, including those that I deem optional. I'm not going to mention anything by brand, or I'm going to try my best not to because I don't want you to get caught up on brand at this time. Really just focus on the materials and those that will be best suited for your collection. So with that said, I'm going to start off with Hackle because I get so many emails about Hackle that I absolutely have to start there. Hackle is nearly synonymous with dry flies. With Hackle, you have lots of choices out there, some of which can be quite expensive. It's my hope to help simplify that entire process during this video. Though I want to preface this section by saying that I know Hackle can be quite expensive, though I've learned over the years you typically do get what you pay for. Now I will give you a tip later on in this portion that will help to, we'll say, uh, cut down the cost of that initial investment. Now whenever you go to buy Hackle, there are two types to choose from. That's either a neck or a saddle. The majority of my collection is made up of saddles because I know what colors I use most of the time and in what sizes. With any beginner, I always recommend going with a neck because they offer you a wide variety of sizes and choices. Now let's get that part kind of out of the way so you have a neck to go with. And now let's start talking about the colors. You have two initial color choices and that's either a solid or a barred. I typically go with the latter because I believe that those barred hackles once wrapped around a hook or around a parachute post, basically give a proof of life and they almost suggest movement on that pattern. Now you'll notice that the majority of these colors I'm recommending are going to be in barred colors. And to get to those three colors, let's start with a grizzly hackle. A grizzly is just without a doubt one of my go-to hackle colors out there. One of my early fly fishing and fly tying mentors used to always tell me that any fly will work as long as it has either peacock curl or grizzly hackle on it. And I really have taken that to heart. The next color I'm going to recommend is one on the light end of the spectrum, and that's a barred cream. And then finally, on the darker end of the spectrum, I'm going to go with a dun. This is a bronze dun, though a dark dun will be a great substitute as well. Now I believe with th these three color choices, you can match the vast majority of dry flies that are out there. If you look through my box, you'll see basically these three colors on nearly all of my dry flies. These are my three recommended colors. Now, are there other colors out there that I would consider optional? Yes, without a doubt. 
I'm going to put a link to a video on the screen right now. That's my selecting saddle hackle video. At the end of that video, I give a bunch of color recommendations to you. If these three aren't listed, then all the other colors would be what I would consider optional. Now finally, I did mention a way to cut down costs, and I tried to use the term terminology cut down as a, an attempt at a pretty poor pun, but this is a neck that was cut in half. You can purchase these necks at a lower cost than you can a full neck, and that will really help to cut down on your initial investment. Though I always recommend get a buddy, purchase an entire neck, and cut it in half. And when you do that, use a razor blade and cut from the back because you don't want to cut that precious hackle. So I hope that this will help to narrow down your selection process when it comes to hackle. But if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me because I know that can be a really complicated part of the entire dry fly material process. Following hackle, let's talk about a couple more materials that I think are essentials in terms to floating a dry fly. The next one's an easy choice for me, and that's a CDC feather. These come from ducks and geese, and if you know any duck hunters, have them hold on to these feathers for you because they are priceless in my opinion. You can use these for caddis flies, you can use these for emergers, for spinner wings. The sky is the limit, and the color I recommend is natural. It's a very a done like color. The next thing I'm going to recommend is coastal deer hair. I use this material for comparadons for all of my dry fly caddis in some emergers uh, for a lot of my terrestrials. There are just so many choices for this comparadon material. One tip for it, whenever you go to buy it, put a white piece of paper or your fingers behind the tips and you want to see those tips to have just a little portion of black on the end of every tip. I look for coastal deer hair fibers that are relatively thin in a natural to a little bit darker color. That's my selection whenever I'm purchasing this coastal deer hair. Now for those, we'll say materials that float flies that are optional. I have two that I would say, yeah, can you have these? Absolutely. They might be considered your go-to materials, but in terms of the flies that I fish on a regular basis, these are kind of that next tier down. One is going to be a uh, snowshoe rabbit foot in the color done. Uh, this material is used on so many different portions of the fly. Uh, you can use it on a fly called the usual, which, and it's the tail, body, and the wing. Um, you can use this as wing material, as that hackle material that will almost float it. I've seen people do just basically everything with this material. It's a nearly magical material that I would say it's a great optional one to have in your collection. And then continuing, I'm going to go with some more deer hair, but this is dyed black. Um, I think this black color is a great color to have for a lot of terrestrials, especially ants, but I'm not going to say this is that absolute go-to. This would be a great secondary color to have in terms of coastal deer hair. So these are just some materials that I would recommend that will also additionally help to float these dry flies. Now let's talk about winging. I've already recommended two materials that I use on a lot of my mayflies, caddisflies, and midges. And those materials are CDC and coastal deer hair. There are two additional materials that I recommend that you purchase. And whenever I say materials, I basically mean one material in two different colors. And that material is an antron or a zelon fiber. These are just great fibers that are easy to work with. The two colors that I recommend purchasing are Dunn, and this is used for so many mayfly wings, most notably the blueing olives. And then next, I recommend purchasing a high visibility color that you can see far away. The two that I use most often would be fluorescent chartreuse and hot pink. And if I had to narrow it down to one, I always go hot pink. I can see this color so far away in the streams, and there is really very few things in nature that look anything like this. Sometimes I'm embarrassed to show some of my friends my dry fly and emerger boxes because I have this high-vis pink in so many of my patterns. Now there are two additional materials, but I'm going to classify these as those optional ones that are not the must-haves that you have to go out and purchase right away. One is going to be a very traditional material known as wood duck flank. Wood duck flank feathers are just incredible winging materials. They're barred and have just a great coloration to them. Again, if you know a duck hunter, please talk to your friend and try to get some of this wood duck flank off of them because it's a great feather. Kirk, if you're watching, thank you for all the wood duck feathers. And then the second material that I would recommend is calf body hair. 
Now they also sell calf tails, though I don't think that that material is, is as easy to work with, especially for beginners. Thus, if you're looking for another winging material, grab some calf body hair. It comes in a variety of colors. I typically will shoot with white or done. So those are some materials that I would recommend for winging, including some of the optional ones too. Now I'm going to recommend some materials for the bodies of dry flies. The first one is an essential, and that's peacock hurl. You can use this in so many different dry fly patterns, such as terrestrials, midges like the Griffith snap, and in lots of caddis imitations. The beauty of peacock hurl is that it can also transfer to so many other types of flies, like wet flies, nymphs, streamers. This is an essential fly tying material. Go out and buy some. Now I'm going to recommend five colors of dubbing. I believe that when you have these five colors paired with that peacock curl, you can match the majority of dry fly situations out there. The colors are tan. I love to use tan, especially in caddis imitations and on a fly called the Tan Adams. Next is pale yellow, basically a light Cahill style of color that could be used on a lot of PMDs, like Cahills, and even sulfurs. Next is Adams gray. You can use this on a lot of caddisfly and mayfly imitations, primarily the Adams, but gray is just a great color to have on dry flies. The fourth dubbing color is an olive, used primarily for bluing olives, but you can use this also on a lot of different drakes. And then finally, I would recommend going with a brown rusty color. I love the color that's rusty because it can be used on the majority of spinners. And we're talking about the spinner imitation for mayflies. Now those are my five recommended colors. Along with other sections, I am going to have an optional selection for this one as well. And for starters, you may want to consider going with a dry fly dubbing pack that comes with eight or 12 different colors, assuming it has those five colors in it as well. There's lots of different packs out there that are being sold at different companies. I could probably recommend one or two if you'd like, so you're more than welcome to email me regarding that dubbing pack. The other material that I would say is optional, but it's a great one to have, and again, it kind of falls in the, the second tier of materials for what I use, and it's going to be turkey biots. I love turkey biots because they give segmented bodies. These are some of the colors that I use primarily, uh, and whenever I say primarily, these are typically, uh, this is a material that I would use mainly on mayfly bodies. And I got the olive, that sulfur yellow, the Adams gray, and again, a rusty color. So th these are some of the materials that I use preferably for the bodies of dry flies. Um, there's a lot of other materials that are out there, but again, whenever I thought about it, what, which materials do I use the most? Which ones do I recommend to others? These are easily those materials that I suggest that you go out and buy. For the tailing, I'm going to make this very easy on you. Don't worry about buying anything. If you've already purchased those three colors that I previously recommended for the hackle, then you can use some of the larger hackles, strip them off, and use those fibers for your tailing fibers. Now, I am going to mention some additional optional ones that you could purchase. For starters, I like to use micro fibbits on a lot of my dry flies. Micro fibbits are artificial fibers that look basically like, we'll say, paintbrush tips. Now there are a couple colors that I would recommend, again, part of the optional part. One would be light done, another dark done, light Cahill, and finally orange. The only other material type that I use on a relatively regular basis for dry flies would be Coke de Leon. I use this material a lot more for nymphs, thus it's not one that I would recommend as an absolute for dry fly tailing. Now it's time for thread selection. I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible. I'm going to recommend three colors, basically a light, a medium, and a dark. For the light, I'm going to recommend that you purchase light Cahill. For the medium, a tan. And for the dark, Adam's gray. The bigger question shouldn't be about the color, but it should be about the size of the thread you're going to select. The two main choices out there are 6 aught and 8 aught. To put it in perspective, 25 years ago, all of my threads were 6 aught. Now they're mainly 8-aught. 6-aught threads won't break as easily as 8-aughts. 
Now, you have to go with whichever selection that you think is best for you. If I had to make one recommendation for a beginner, I would go with 6 aught. The biggest recommendation I can make aside from colors is that whatever size you go with, go with that same size for all three colors. Thus, you'll know to use that same tension when tying your dry flies. We finally made it to the last section of my recommendations, and it's another important one, hooks. Hooks are very similar to hackle. There's lots of choices out there, and they can be quite expensive. So let's try to keep this as simple as possible. I'm going to recommend a bunch of different sizes, and my advice is going to be to stick with one style of hook so you can get comfortable tying on that same style regardless of size. Now, for the styles, let's talk about the wire. I would go with a thin wire or a standard wire. You don't want, you don't want too much metal because, again, you're trying to float this hook. Next, let's talk about the length of the hook. For the majority of these flies, you're going to go with a standard length. So you don't want to buy anything with an XL or XS designation. XS means it's a little bit smaller. XL is a little bit larger. Now, unlike most of these other sections, I am going to recommend a specific type of hook for dry flies. It's going to be the Daiichi 1110. And there's a reason related to this recommendation. The 1110 has a very unique eye. Now, the eye of dry fly hooks can be either down eye, up eye, or straight. And the 1110 has a straight eye. Now, I don't know if that's any better or any worse, but there's another quality about it that just makes this one stand out, and it's that it's a big eye. So whenever you compare the size of that eye to other styles, it is much bigger, and that helps out a lot of beginning fly tires. I've noticed a lot of beginners, when tying dry flies, tend to crowd the eye of the hook with a lot of materials. Thus, when you get to the river, the stream, the lake, and you go to put your tippet through that eye, it's really difficult to do that. I know from personal experience years ago. With this hook, you don't have to worry about that so much. Because it's a larger eye, it also helps those who don't have the best eyesight as well. So the Daiichi 1110 is without a doubt a great hook to go with. Now let me make some recommendations in regards to sizes. Let's go with packs of 50 for sizes 12, 14, and 16. Those are the really common sizes for mayflies and caddisflies. Now let's also buy packs of 25 for a few sizes as well. Let's go uh, pack of 25 for size 10, for size 18, and for size 20. Sizes 18 and 20 are much smaller, and they may seem a little intimidating at first, but with a lot of practice, once you get used to tying those 14s and 16s, it's now just kind of taking those proportions and working them down a little bit towards the 18s and 20s, and then who knows what's to follow. So these are some hook recommendations that I have, but the one thing I do want to caution you about is these are hook recommendations in regards to the most common trout fishing that I do. You may want to call a local shop in your area just to verify that those sizes will cover all the flies that you're going to be fishing and imitating. I have a few final thoughts before I wrap up this video. For starters, I want to remind everybody that this is by no means a comprehensive list of the materials needed to tie dry flies. This is a list of those that are essential, I believe, to a beginner who's going out to purchase materials. These are all based on my personal fly tying and fly fishing experiences. Thus, if you feel that I missed something that's an essential in the world of fly tying for dry flies, please list it in the comments section below. As a reference point, I've listed all of my recommended materials in the description of this video. Next, I want to mention quality of fly tying materials. As you get out there and start to purchase these materials, you're going to notice that you have different options, basically different tiers of quality. The higher the quality, typically the higher the cost, and that's a decision that you have to make. My biggest piece of advice is select the one that makes the most sense for you. But if you feel that you're going to be in the world of fly tying and fly fishing for years to come, I would always say push towards that higher quality item because a lot of these materials you're going to have for years. And I look back now and say, man, I made some great decisions whenever I bought certain materials 5, 10, 15 years ago. And there's some that I thought, what was I thinking? But in reality, it was probably because it was a lower priced item that I thought I would utilize. But in reality, I didn't. Finally, whenever selecting materials to tie dry flies with, don't be afraid to be creative. There are materials out there that are perfect that I didn't list in this video. And there are ways to kind of 
get around the fly tying world, so to speak. You don't have to just shop at fly shops and online at cabelas.com and whatever other fly shops that you utilize. Don't be afraid to check out other resources because there are great materials out there that aren't classified as fly tying materials. If you ever come across any of those, please by all means list them in the comments section of this video because I am always excited to see what else is out there. And we have to be creative in our thinking and in our tying on an absolute regular basis so we can push ourselves to be better at this game. Well, with all that said, I really do appreciate you viewing this YouTube fly tying tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, you can email me at tkamisa at gmail.com or you can leave them in the comments section below. If you'd like to view more of my YouTube fly tying tutorials, you can do so at my website, which is troutandfeather.com. I also have a Facebook page that you can like. Once again, everyone, thanks for viewing this video, and this is related to purchasing materials for dry flies.